And Quiverstock are going to do a Zoom for us, and they're going to be doing all the archery clothing, um, clothing associated with archery. Um, and they are one of our archery suppliers at Tarm. So if you could just have a little look. And uh, um, Julie and Bart, are you there? We are indeed. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Hello. So um, <clears throat> we... So Bart is um, downstairs in our shop and I'm going to talk you through some of the um, different periods of arming clothing that we have available. If anybody's got any questions, pop them in the chat and I'll try and answer them as we're going along. Um, or if you want to talk to me, then that would be grand too. Um, so we'll start off, I think, probably just do this in, in kind of date order. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. If you could confirm for me, please, somebody. Yep, hear yeah. you fine. Yeah. Yep. Good. Um, so we'll start with early period stuff. Um, if you want to grab us maybe a, a Viking battle tunic and a, and a Viking tunic tunic, and then we can talk about the differences in those. So we've got um, battle tunic um, on the right of the screen, which is the green one. This is a basically a, a gambeson in disguise, if you like. So we started making these for the guys that are doing the early period full contact stuff. So it, it's a gambeson on the inside, linen lined, fully padded. And on the outside, it's got a hand finished wool tunic and it's all one garment. So it's quite handy um, to wear under mail. Uh, it can be used in living history because it's all hand finished. Um, and beside that, um, Bart's got also to show us a, a terracotta colored civilian tunic, similar style. Um, but this one is unpadded. So we do both of those kind of Viking Saxon period. Um, slightly later period as we as we start to, to edge out of the Dark Ages into medieval times, we have um, long longer gambesons, both in linen. Um, so these are part of our deluxe range, which is uh, all hand finished main seams, etc. The linen inside out. The wadding that we use in this range is a bamboo cotton mix. So this has naturally antibacterial properties. It's nice and light and inflexible and easy to wear, but gives you good protection. And um, we do this one in the overhead style, which you can see Bart holding up there. And we also do it in an open fronted style, which has ties down the front. Okay. Um, now these are made to measure or in standard sizes. And they can be made to fit ladies as well as gents, as, as, as all the, the whole of our range can be. So, okay, so um, round about the same kind of period, we've also got the Norman style gambeson. And this one has the collar. Um, it has an opening on the shoulder, which has an extra piece of padding underneath, so you don't have a gap there. Um, this, the Norman style one has laces on the collar. We also do a similar one for 13th century peeps. So anybody going to Evesham 1265 period, we do this gambeson with buttons on the collar. Um, and from the Majowski Bible, which I can never pronounce correctly, um, we also have um, the padded cap, which is ideal for going under mail. Um, this goes really, really well with our 13th century style gambeson. OK, uh, and we can do this covered in mail if you like. Um, so we don't do the, the separate coifs as such, but we do them attached to this padding if you want. Um, so that's that one, which Bart could maybe model for us. OK, um, there we go. So you can see how the ventail works. Now that's got an eyelet in it so you can tie it closed or you can have it flapped open so you can breathe when you're not in combat. And I guess I deal against COVID. <laughs> yeah, um, and this one, um, <coughs> losing my voice, okay. Um, so moving on from there, we get into the, the start of the 14th century, 13th, 14th century transitional stuff. Um, so the buttoned one, okay, so this is your, your 14th century style gambeson. You can see here they're starting to get a bit shorter in style, starting to get a bit more shapely and a bit more fitted. This one has hand stuffed buttons and hand stitched buttonholes. And again, same with all of our deluxe range, it's hand finished main seams. 
made to measure all standard sizes, linen inside and out. Okay, for the same period, we've also got a mannequin standing in front of you with a nice Air Force Blue coloured Charles de Bois style paw point. <laughs> Uh, now this one has the Grand Assiette sleeve that we found on the Charles de Bois paw point. Um, this one's a very fitted garment designed to corset you in the mid midsection so that it can support your armor. It's a little bit loose on the mannequin, but you get the general idea. Um, so you can see the Grand Assiette sleeve and it's still a lightly padded garment. It has articulated elbows and button closures on the, the cuffs and down the front. So this one can, this one is ideally done made to measure so that you get that custom fit that you need for it to work correctly. Oh, that's been attacked by a plague doctor t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's just going to be naughty now. Okay. Um, so also around about the same period from our basics range on the other mannequin, the other side, the natural one. Yep. So this is from our basics range. Now the basics range we introduced um, at the last form that we did in November. Um, now this is for people on a budget so that you're still getting something that has the right silhouette for the period that you're portraying. It's all machine stitched, but it still has a linen outer. So you're still getting that gambeson that you can use in reenactment, but at a slightly lesser price ticket. We do them in standard sizes only they're available to ship immediately. So you've got two benefits that you're not paying the full, full price for made to measure. Um, and you can get that shipped immediately in standard sizes straight off the website or off the peg when we hopefully get released to go back out into the world again. Um, we do the, the basics in this one, which is the later period. We do an earlier period overhead one, like the ones that Bart was showing you earlier. Um, and we do a, a button through pour point style one as well which is a much more simplified version of the Charles de Bois blue one. So there's quite a lot of range there all the way up to, yep, so these are all from the basics range, okay? Um, <clears throat> so cheaper prices, um, still keeping you within um, reenactment standards to keep your silhouette correct for the period that you're doing, which is really the key thing when you're doing a, a portrayal of a historical nature. Um, after that, we go into the 15th century. Um, so gambeson wise, we've got a couple there. This one is actually a ladies fit that Bart's bringing out for us. Um, this one's from our deluxe range. Uh, it's been dyed, hand dyed black. So it's, it's got that slightly mottled hand dyed look about it. All hand finished seams. And this one closes with eyelets rather than buttons. So moving on from 14th century buttons into 15th century eyelets. On the back, we'll be able to see that it has got the classic V style collar on the back you see from the 15th century. And it comes with um, arming eyelets on the shoulders as well. Okay, this one, can, again, this one's ladies, can be also be made for gents, made to measure or in standard sizes. And in the color of your choice. Okay, what else have you got there for us, Bart? 15th century, you would have possibly a livery coat over the top of your armour when you go onto the field. And we do these in lined or unlined, overhead or open front. Um, they work really well over a doublet in the summer just to give you that complete layer that you need for 15th century to be properly dressed without the additional weight of a full coat. Um, but they also work really well as a household identifier over armour, over your brig, over paddy gambeson or mail when you're going onto the field. So these can be made to order. They can be done in whatever colour you want. And any of these garments across this period can have a livery badge added. Okay. Um, so we do um, embroidery, so livery badges can be done. Um, so we've got a couple there from the Wars of the Roses, but we've got, what else have we got there, Bart? Oh, we've got the, the Royal Leopard. Yeah, we've got Harrington Knot. We've got 
uh, Beaufort portcullis. So any any household liveries that you want doing um, can be done. Oh, that makes a nice target, does it? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, and there's the, the fleur de lis. So any of these can be done and combined in any way with your garments. You can order them as separate livery badges or have them embroidered directly onto your garments when you order them. Yeah, okay, so we do them, do them in three sizes. There you go. So you've got the large one at the bottom, then the medium one, and then the little tiny small one. And there's three different prices for the size of embroidery that you want doing. So the larger ones, the yeah, the larger ones are great for on your back. They're roughly 20 centimeters across. And the small ones are ideal for your, your front chest. Okay. Um, where do you want to go from there? Oh, well, we've got, where else we've got behind you? We've got um, a range of linen underwear and things that's ideal for, for people doing living history. So you've got shirts, shifts, coifs, um, underpants, all that kind of stuff. Um, and these are also good for, oh, Bart's, Bart's showing off his underpants, okay. No, thanks, Bart. You're not going to model those for us. No, no. <laughs> these are also great for the guys that are doing um, the full contact medieval sport combat, Bahut. And you can see in the foreground, we have got uh, a Bahut Gamberson, which Bart can show you some of the features of. Oh, he's just set off the intruder alarm. Okay, so we've got. Uh, so this is loosely based on historical patterns, but we've given it a modern twist to make it work for the sport. Um, it's made from cotton canvas with a linen look, um, but it's a bit more durable. It comes with a, a good articulation in the sleeve. It has additional padding in the spine, shoulders, elbows, and hips as standard, which is where the, the combat areas that the, the Bohut guys are having need of extra padding. Um, it's machine washable. It has, this one has eyelets and ties. It can be done with tie fronts. It has a nice contrast lining and it can be done in the colors of your combat society, combat group, whatever, uh, whether it's a national, national club or team colors. Okay, and this here is uh, what we call a sea belt, and we can see that in comparison to a historical Lendonier. Uh, this one's been embroidered, this one belongs to Bart. Um, it's the modern version of the historical Lendonier. So the sea belt buckles at the front, like so. No, not Alexa. Okay, um, and it has the leather parts for tying your armor onto. The historical Lendonier in the historical fashion laces up the back. Okay, and has eyelets at the front for tying your leg harness onto. Both do the same job in a different way for a different purpose. So we make them both historical guys, sports guys. There is some crossover and some people prefer to use one against the other. Um, what else have you got in small padding for us, Bart? Okay, so we've got, yeah, if you want to start at the beginning with, with small padding. Yeah, so we've got bog standard arming caps. Uh, we do these in our deluxe range and in our basics range, depending on your budget. Okay, so whether you want the hand finish or the machine finish, different prices. Okay. Again, from the mispronounced Bible. Uh, what comes after that? Beanies. What we call a beanie because it looks like a modern day beanie. Um, helm liner, which is really, really versatile. These can go into sal they go into spanking helms. They go into salads, nasals, all kinds of things where you don't need that additional 
protection for the back of the neck, anything where you want something nice and neat that can be stitched into your helm. Um, into the Viking period where you're starting to see male, male around the back of the helm. This is great protection underneath that male oven's tail on the Vendel style helms. Okay. Um, then after that, we went on to, we've already looked at the one from the Morgan Bible. Um, we've, we also do a, a liner for um, Roman helms. And this one is about showing us is 14th century. So there's your Roman one. With the little cutouts for the ears. So that one works really well in the Roman Greek style helms. And on the other hand, he's got a 14th century style bassinet liner. And we do these um, as a liner you can buy on its own. You can have it fitted to your helm. You can also have a male oven tail added as well as part of all that job and get it all stitched together as one job if you want to. And for 15th century, uh, this one's actually a replica from a, a historical find. And it's a suspension liner, which is really popular with the jousters in particular because it helps to absorb impact, but it works really well in sallies of all, all styles of that period. So you would have a leather band riveted inside your helm to which the liner would be stitched. Okay. Um, mittens. So one of the things that we find um, for training and in earlier periods is damage to hands. So we've designed this um, mitten, which is ergonomically shaped and doesn't actually affect your grip. So you still get a full circle, circular grip to allow you to hold on to staves and sword grips in a safe fashion while you're, while you're fighting. Um, again, these can be done covered in mail if you want. They can also be added to the earlier period gambesons if you want an integral mitten. Uh, they can be done that way as well as an add-on to those. Okay, thank you ever so much, Julian Bart. That was very good. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. And we're going to have